And I think this is the biggest barrier right now for lots of makers not writing more is because there's still this image people have that, you know, either you're good or bad at writing. And and the reality is just that either you've practiced for, lo- practiced for long enough or you haven't. And I think that anyone who takes the time to write regularly will, will become really good at writing. Hey everybody, it's Corey. I'm the creator of Blurt, and today I'm here with Anne Laura LeCumpf. Uh Thanks for joining us, Anne. Anne Laura, sorry. Hi. <laughs> no, you said my name. All right, thanks for that. Great. Yeah. So, a uh, little bit like your background. I know you've been an entrepreneur for a while now. Um, you've been doing some making a lot over the last two years. I remember you created InstaList. That was a, that was how I kind of discovered you, the InstaList app. Oh, nice. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. It was like a way to discover Instagrammable places. Um, and you also, I know you were in the 24 hour startup, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I basically, I used to, I, I've been in tech for basically, um, for as long as I've been working basically. So I used uh-huh. to work at Google and I left a couple of years ago. And since then, uh, I've been kind of doing my own stuff. Um, mm-hmm. first, um, more of a traditional startup and now making stuff more the indie way. So I started with Instalist where, which you, you discovered. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, I joined the 24 hour startup. When was that? That was in November, I think, where I built my very first Chrome extension. Uh, I say I built, but I think, uh, I like everyone built it because I don't think I would have managed to do it on my own. <laughs> uh, awesome. so, uh, I, with a bunch of people built that thing. Uh, which was which was great, and um, and then uh, other stuff I've been working on. Uh, they, like I've always loved writing, so I've done an ebook recently, and currently my biggest project and my main focus is working on Maker Mag, uh, which is a magazine for indie makers. Awesome, yeah, and so that's exactly it. I know that you, and and too, what I I mean, you've been writing like on Medium for a while too, just kind of like sharing your thoughts um, of what you've been working on. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how you got into Maker Mag because it's pretty cool. It's like a, uh, it, it's essentially an online journal for all topics related to like independent software development, and specifically the whole maker movement that was really big this last year. Yeah, definitely. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, I used to work at Google and I used to read TechCrunch and Wired and all of these tech publications that we have for well, basically they're all about founded startups that you won't really find indie makers in there. So all of the, like lots of the announcements are about this startup that raised a million or 2 million, or when we talk about we work billions, for example. Crazy. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's insane. And when, when I joined the indie maker movement, I was looking for such a publication to kind of follow what was happening. And uh, there were lots of, lots of makers are maintaining their own individual blog either on medium or self-hosted, but I couldn't find any central place where a centralized place where I could read about uh, makers, not only news about what they were launching because product hunt is doing a great job at that, but also their thoughts and their, what their, their culture and their goals and all of these kind of things. So mm-hmm. uh, that's how the idea for maker mag came about. And um, when I thought about it, I, I spend a lot of time, maybe too much time on Twitter, but <laughs> I, uh, I tweeted the idea and, uh, and it kind of went viral, like got hundreds of likes, lots of people retweeted it. I got lots of DMs from people who were like, I would love to join and, and write for this. And, and people who actually didn't have um, a medium or a blog, a blog and didn't think that they would write uh, enough to do this, but, uh, wanted to participate in a bigger project. So this is how it started. Awesome. Very cool. And how, so Twitter obviously has been a central place to like, uh, reach out. How are you getting people to contribute to maker mag? What's the, how do you, how how are people generating content for maker mag? So what, what's really nice is that, uh, so they're, they were the first week uh, after I, I kind of tweeted about it. Uh, we got, about 40 people who joined. Uh, so we have this Telegram group where we collaborate together and share ideas and brainstorm. And 
uh, you know, every week we, we have at least a couple of people who bring another couple of people on board. So they read their articles or they, they, they share, they share it with their friends. And so it's currently it's growing organically. I think we have 55 people right now. Awesome. And, uh, and I think, uh, the reason why they, they, they contribute is because they're, they have this platform where, I mean, we, we put a lot of work in the design and making sure that it was very easy to read. We actually took a lot of inspiration from medium in terms of how we wanted it to look. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're very open in terms of topics. So it's, it's not only about building products. We have topics about wellness, mental health, uh, traveling and, and lots of different things that makers love to talk and read about and that you would, you will not necessarily find about on other publications like Hacker Noon or, or other, which are great, but are very focused on the tech side of things. Yeah, that's great. That's super cool. Um, so I know your background is like you did content marketing. I think I remember reading or you mentioning to me yeah. at Google. Um, how is it you, you yourself kind of got into the writing space anyways? Uh, that happened very, very early. I uh, I was writing novels when I was younger. As like that was my hobby. I ah, okay. I really like doing that. I love reading and writing. I was um, when I was still living in France. I was one of the admins for the biggest forums for young writers there. Uh, uh -huh. That that was when I was sixteen or seventeen. So that that was a long time ago. And uh, I've I've always loved writing. I when I was a kid, I thought I would become a novelist. Um, turns out, I, I think I'm good at writing, but not good enough to maybe write a, a proper novel that would get published by an editor. The good thing, though, is that nowadays, and this is what I did with the ebook, and I think it's awesome. Uh, there used to be a lot of gatekeeping in terms of publishing a book because you needed to send, and I did that when I was a teenager, print all of your like your oh. novel or whatever <laughs> you want to publish. Yeah, go to the post office and 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 send it to you know 10, 20 editors and uh, publishers and hoping that one of them would come back to you. Most of the time, they would not even come back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, there's lots of tools to self-publish. And uh, and I think it's super empowering because now you can build your audience. And if you find enough people who are interested in what you have to say, you don't need to go through a middleman anymore to to share your thoughts and, and have your own audience. And and you don't need to have an audience of 100,000 people anymore to, to be able to, to publish content. Even yeah. if there are a few hundred people who want to read your stuff, it's, it's good enough for, to motivate you to write. Yeah, no, and I think that's true. Like we're seeing that, it's kind of weird. I've been noticing how products and writing are kind of the same thing. So it kind of makes sense how Maker Mag is even like, you know, as you being involved, it's all kind of related. It's all kind of like uh, yeah. that in independent nature. Um, and that's that's what makers are all about. It's, you know, you know, being smaller and being able to build something very specific for a small group of people. Um, so with related to... Uh, so I was actually, that's where I was kind of headed. Cause the other thing that I know you did last year was maker, uh, make and shine, which, yeah. um, you, which, yeah, it was re kind of related. Like I, I think it was a 30 day competition. Uh, you were, yes, you decided yeah, about this. I, okay. Yeah. We, we had a, it's when you think about it, like there were a lot of, uh, competitions and, and sort of like <laughs> hackathons for makers at the yeah. end of last year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they, I don't think I, I would, do them all again because it's quite tiring to to have to you know sustain that kind of uh, workload. But uh, but it was great to to get me to be. I, I was very productive for during those those past few months because of these competitions. And this one in particular was organized by uh, Women Make and Ben Tussle from Nuco. Okay. And uh, it was a thirty day challenge where you had to create and launch something. Could be anything. Could be a, a product. Uh, could be some people decided to launch an e shop. Uh, whatever. And in my case, um, I wanted to participate, but I was going to travel to Algeria, uh, where my family is from, for two weeks. And the internet is kind of <laughs> non-existent there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I, um, I thought writing would be a good thing to do because I can do it even if I'm offline. And when I wrote the ebook, I was just like writing down what I would I would have to look up later, but I could still work on it if I had yeah. no internet. So that that's why I picked that. And and also based on lots of conversations I was starting to have with makers about marketing their products and and putting putting them th themselves out there and how uncomfortable some of them thought this was. So 
I kind of had a topic and I had a good reason to work on more of an offline product I could I could work on from Algeria. So that's that's how the idea came about. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, what was your experience like writing a book? <laughs> I mean, obviously you did it as <laughs> you did it when you were younger uh, for fun. And this was like more of a challenge. So I guess that probably helped you get it done. But uh, yeah, what, how'd that process go for you? It was both easier and, and harder. Uh, I guess it was um, it was easier because I had a very good idea of what the content was going to be just because it was not something I was making. Like, I was writing novels when I was a kid, so I was literally m- making it up or trying to plan, but it keeps on changing. And, and I have so many novels I never finished because I couldn't find the right ending for it. So uh, <laughs> in, that, in that sense, writing a book about marketing for makers, which was much easier because... I wrote down the the outline and I changed a few things, but basically all of the content was already in my head somewhere and easy to access. So that was the easy bit. Um, the hard bit, though, is that it was for the same reason. It was my first time writing a nonfiction book, so um, it 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 was hard for me to figure out how to keep it interesting because I, I didn't want it to to feel um, like a school book uh, that mm. you know that I wouldn't enjoy reading. So I had to, I, I took with me in Algeria a few business books with me that I remembered enjoying when I was reading them just to kind of like sift through them and seeing what it was that I really enjoyed when reading them. And I tried to bring some of that back into Make and Shine. So yeah, a lot of inspiration from other other business books that, that I read. So that was, that was the harder part. First time writing a nonfiction book and obviously the uh, constraint of having to write it in 30 days yeah. was also... It probably didn't feel good, but it probably helped you get it done, I guess, at the same time. <laughs> yes, I, c- I could have probably kept on working on it for a few more months if I didn't have that deadline. So I'm actually happy that I had it. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so and then what about publishing? So that like I really like the point you were making earlier, how um, you don't necessarily have to be held back by the big publishing places out there today. So did you like evaluate other I don't I don't. How did, like how did you decide to go the the way that you did? Yeah, so um, again, the challenge helped a lot in the sense that the challenge was to create and launch something mm-hmm. in thirty days. So I had to launch whatever I was creating at the end of October. Mm-hmm. So uh, that already uh, made it completely impossible to con- even consider working with traditional publishers because the you know the timelines are months uh, or if not years to to work with them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, and, and in any case, to, to submit something to, to a traditional publisher, I would have probably needed to make it longer and to like, you know, so um, so that, that helps. And then in terms of indie publishing, there were lots of options. And actually, uh, it's funny how I, I, uh, I probably wouldn't do, do it the same way if I, if I were to do it again today. But at the time, the two publishers I, were, I was considering were Gumroad and Amazon. Gumroad, uh, because I've read so many good things about it, and they're like really um, interesting founders that are uh, big proponents of the indie maker movement, such as Nathan Barry, who's the CEO of ConvertKit, uh, who always publish on on Gumroad and are very happy with it. So Gumroad was was very high on my list, but then. I don't know. It's just probably because lots of people were telling me, "What you're not going to publish on Amazon?" But everyone is reading their eBooks on Kindle, and so I was like, "Okay, I'm going to do that." And publishing on Gumroad took me probably five minutes. Mm-hmm. Publishing on Amazon took me a whole day because their <laughs> interface is so bad, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's just it's just really hard to use. And uh, I'm I'm quite tech savvy, but I was actually struggling to understand exactly what the format was supposed to look like and all of these kind of things. And because they're such a big company, Gumroad, you can just like, you can even tweet at them and they'll come back to you and be like, we'll help you. Amazon is too bad. Your book got rejected. You need to try again. And they're very vague as to what was wrong. So, so, but I still did it because everyone was telling me you need to do it. So I did that. And turns out I looked at my numbers a week ago and I sold about, I think 85% of my books on Gumroad. Uh, so, yeah. um, I don't know if I would publish again on Amazon in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's also saturated, you know, cause it's bigger. So there's, it's probably harder to stand out. I, I think that that's, what's kind of interesting too. Cause I was thinking about how you were saying, cause make and shine is about how to kind of like be willing to stand out 
a little bit with your own personal brand. Um, so it's kind of a cool message even too, like how you're saying, like that's the beauty of writing. Do you think, do you think people should be writing more that people that aren't writing? Is it something that you are like big on personally for people? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's a, I mean, I have a chapter about that in the book and it, it starts with, uh, I know it's meta because it is kind of meta to tell people to write eBooks and, and write for their blogs, etc. cetera, when mm-hmm. like instead of my own ebook, but mm-hmm. yes, I'm really big on it. It's, it's one of the most accessible thing for people to, to do. You don't need a, a crazy computer. You don't need, uh, you don't need a camera. You don't need anything expensive. You can do it from literally anywhere you're, even if your computer is dead, you can take a piece of paper and, and, and do it. And you're, you know, anytime you have downtime, um, I think it's also very powerful because, uh, it's very easy to distribute. You can use it in different formats. You can, again, you can print it eBooks using on your blog. You can take some snippets and then use them on social media to share with people so they can reshare them. Uh, it's also, you know, lots of the, um, People I know who are getting speaking gigs at conferences and these kind of things, for example, uh, most of the time it's based on something they wrote before. So if they published a book or if they have a popular blog, et cetera. So, yes, I'm very big on writing and, and I'm very much convinced that anyone can do it. And I think this is the biggest barrier right now for lots of makers not writing more is because there's still this image people have that you know, either you're good or bad at writing. And and the reality is just that either you've practiced for, lo- practiced for long enough or you haven't. And I think that anyone who takes the time to write regularly will, will become really good at writing. Yeah. That's awesome advice. Yeah. And, and if you never put anything out, how are people ever going to know that you're there? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, what, so what advice do you have for people to get st- started or maybe even better yet, is there a way or is it even necessary to stand out in some way? Like, is there advice to, like, what is your advice for people to get going with if they want to start, like, yeah. building a brand for themselves? Yeah, um, I think uh, it really depends where, uh, wh- what's the, their personal barrier for it. If lots of people say, I don't have ideas, and this is this is why I think it's interesting what you, you ask about, do you need to stand out? Mm-hmm. And the thing is that, um it's very hard to come up with new ideas. It, it just, you know, ev- almost everything has been written about already. So uh, I don't think it should be something blocking people. Uh, and and instead, actually, like reading other people's blogs and and you know just thinking about it and thinking, oh, do I agree with this person? Oh, maybe I have another take on this. I could write something that could be a response to this, mm. or that could be, you know, a l- slightly different twist on it. So lots of people don't write because they're trying to to find this super original idea uh, that no one has been talking about. And if no one's talking about it, it's probably because no one's interested in it either. So I would, yeah. So I would, <laughs> I would, I would, I would pick something that people are talking about that, that you're interested in and just write about it. And it doesn't need to be this groundbreaking, you know, thing and super original that's going to get you a Nobel prize in literature. That's not the goal. So start small and and after a while you you will see that the more you start writing the more you you start you know finding your own angle and this is where i think you can start becoming original and and really start having a style of writing and and you know ideas and things you're a big proponent of that will make people recognize your writing even if they don't know that it's you but it takes time and i don't think people should aim at starting there they should start small awesome yeah no that's awesome advice well, Anlor, we are running out of time. It goes by so quick. Um, if people are uh, interested in checking out Maker Mag, I definitely like. If you're in the maker space and you haven't heard about Maker Mag, which I'd be surprised that you haven't, um, definitely check out Maker Mag. That's at m a k e r dot or m a g dot com. Maker Mag, and then Anlor is on Twitter. You can find her there, and um, she has her own website of all the other stuff she's constantly working on. Um, and that's at a n n e dash l a u r e dot net. Um, and Lord, thank you again for, uh, chatting with us and ex- yeah, excited to share, um, share all this knowledge. Very cool. Um, we'll be talking again soon. Thanks. All right. Bye. Carl. All right. Bye-bye.